Hi, and welcome to module four in lecture five. In the previous module, we talked about the antiderivative, which was the inverse operation to the derivative, and we discussed how that relates to the indefinite integral. What we still have not done yet, though, is discuss how the indefinite integral, or antiderivative, is of any help in trying to understand calculating definite integrals, which we've already said are really relevant to understanding how to calculate the area under the curve, which are relevant for statistical inference. Here, now, we're finally going to make the connection via what's called the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. The Fundamental Theorem of Calculus is actually pretty straightforward. It says that the definite integral from a to b, remember that curly s is the integral sign, a and b are the bounds, the lower bound is a, the, the upper bound is b, f of x is the integrand, it's what you're integrating, and dx is the variable of integration, right? It's the, it's the infinitesimal that refers to the variable you're integrating over. We say we integrate over x. Okay. And the fundamental theorem of calculus says that this thing equals the antiderivative evaluated at point B minus the antiderivative evaluated at point A. That is the fundamental theorem of calculus, and it connects antiderivatives to definite integrals. And that's really it. Um, it's very powerful, though, because it lets us calculate all sorts of definite integrals. We'll do one example now. More examples we'll have to wait until we can actually put more functions into our toolkit so that we can integrate them. Right now, though, we can do a, we can do a simple one. Let's start with the function x squared. Right. Let's say we want to integrate. Um, we want to figure out the area under the under a parabola from a to b. How do we do that? And let's let's say a equals one and b equals two. So we want to figure out the area under the parabola from one to two. How do we go about doing that? Well, first we must figure out what the antiderivative is. Well. So we'll learn a rule for this in the next module, but for now, we have to guess. So what function, when differentiated, produces back x squared? Well, let's see. Um, we know from the power rule that whenever you differentiate a power of x, you get that power back again, minus 1. So we can try an x cubed. Now, though, if I differentiate x cubed, I get 3x squared. Remember, I pulled down the power, multiplied by x to the power minus 1. That's the power rule for differentiation. So to balance out that 3 I'm going to pull down, I need a 1 third out front. So this is one possible antiderivative. We can add a c to accommodate all possible antiderivatives. So there we go. Now we can actually finish this up. What this says is that the definite integral of x squared from 1 to 2, which you can write as this, 1 to 2, x squared dx, that's how you read this, the integral from 1 to 2 of x squared dx, equals the function evaluated at 2. So I'm going to plug in a 2 over here for the x, so 2 cubed, minus the same function evaluated at 1, so I'm going to plug in a 1 cubed for x, and that's it. This equals 8 thirds minus 1 third plus c minus c. The c's will always cancel, which is why the integral is definite. Right? We have a definite area. There's no uncertainty in terms of some kind of unknown integration constant. It would always cancel in any definite integral, so we can just ignore those. So this equals 7 thirds. And that's it. We just computed the area under a parabola in about, what, 30 seconds? Right? So this is the power of calculus. We can deal with things like this very quickly once we get a handle on what the antiderivative is. So that's this. We can do some more examples. There's another example in the book. Um, there are more examples in the problem sets. But to do more examples, really, I think it's better just to wait until we get into learning some rules for calculating integrals, and then we can start doing more complicated examples of definite integrals. Okay. So that's it for now. Before moving on to compute some examples of, in, of integrals, both inf indefinite and definite, let's go back and talk a little bit about why we're doing this. Um, as we said before in a previous module, 
there are really two major reasons why we compute integrals in social sciences. The first is re relates to statistical inference. Now, most of this you're not going to learn now, and we can't even give a very good description of it until we learn probability in the next part of the class. But for the moment, consider a probability distribution. This is supposed to be a normal distribution, a bell curve. Let's say we convert the unit such that the mean is at zero. So we subtract um, the mean from everything. And over here, we divide each point. We subtract out the, after subtracting out the mean, we divide each point by the standard deviation. Um, that gives us what's known as a z-score. So each point becomes a z-score, which is how the, dis how the distance you are from the mean in units of standard deviation. Now, why do we do that? We do that because the area in the curve between 0 and z and the area of the, in the curve between z and infinity are closely related to the chance of drawing a particular z from this distribution. The bigger z is, the bigger that red area, sorry, the bigger the red area is, and the smaller the blue area is. The smaller the blue area is, the less chance you have of drawing any z score further away than the one you drew. The smaller that chance is, the less likely it is that you drew that z from the distribution represented here. That's connected very closely to inference. If we can infer that the z you drew did not actually, was not likely to actually have come from this distribution, we say that that z is statistically significantly different from zero. And that allows us to assign some meaning um, to that value of z, to that coefficient that you're testing. You learn a lot more about this in statistics classes. I want to talk a little more about inference when we do probability distributions in part three of the class. But computing these, these, these areas in the curve is central to this, and that's why one reason why it's important to understand integrals. Now, in practice, you're going to look, look up most of these things on a table or have a computer program do it for you because, as we noted before, you can't actually compute the area under a normal distribution in a definite integral. You can only do it numerically. So you either have a table of values or, in practice, when you're doing stats yourself, you'll probably have a computer program do it for you. But that's one reason it's important to understand what these things are and how you use them. The second one, which you will kind of compute by hand more often, is in formal theory and game theory, and you can understanding expected utility. Again, we'll talk more about this when we do probability distributions, but to give you a little, a little head start here, let's say we had some utility, um, and let's use x squared, we just did this one before. Um, let's say our utility function was x squared, so we wanted this thing, and we wanted it more and more and more as we got more of it. Right? We're very greedy for it. But let's say it fundamentally was uncertain. There's some chance that the x we got was somewhere between, say, uh, say 1 and 3. How do we deal with that? What we would do is integrate our utility over the distribution, the uniform distribution, between 1 and 3. You'll learn about a uniform distribution again in the probability part of this class, but for now, I'll take my word for it. And note that the uniform distribution is given by um, this out front, and you, multiply, and you put one inside the integral. So the integral of this is going to be 1 over 2 times x squared dx. And this and there's a times one in there for the uniform distribution is PDF, but one times anything is one, is, is the anything, so we can ignore the one. We can compute this integral. We already said that the integral of x squared is one third x cubed. So this is going to be a one half times one third x cubed evaluated from one to three. This vertical line means evaluated at three then evaluate it at 1, and subtract the evaluation at 1 from the evaluation at 3. In other words, 3 cubed minus 1 cubed. 3 cubed is 27. That's 27 sixth minus 1 sixth, or 13 thirds. Okay. 
there you go. You have the expected value to you of this situation in which you care about something more and more as you get more of it, and you have an equal chance of getting somewhere between one and three. This is the kind of thing that allows you to figure out whether or not you should take actions. Let's say this action, um, you had a choice between this action and doing nothing. Should you do this action? Well, you get 13 thirds for doing this action on an expectation. You get zero for doing nothing, so you should do the action. If instead this gamble, this, unlike, this, this uncertain action costs you five, since five is 15 thirds, that's more than the benefit you get for an expectation, so you should not do this. So this helps you understand when to take actions, when not to take actions. Okay. And those are the two major ways we're gonna use it in political science. In the next module, we're gonna start learning actually how to compute integrals. Thank you very much.